Hello my soccer universe, the first leg of the Champions League knocker stage round of 16 is in the books and what can we say, well the standard fixture was the standard fixture with the standard performance by Real Madrid just overcoming Liverpool, let's put it that way and flattening them in the process, scoring more goals at Anfield uh, in Europe than any other team ever has, so that was the standout but we also have that you know um we had a lot of away wins i mean many ties seemingly are already decided we had only overall over all the eight games with only three home wins which is kind of uh, odd and then one draw that potentially if the team would have played properly meaning leipzig uh could have also resulted in a win there are two other things that really stick out to me. A, it was a rotten two weeks for the English teams. Three of them losing, only City managing a draw. That was the first one. Not saying that they get eliminated. I think they're all still, except for Liverpool, they're all three likely will make it through uh, because they have the, the home legs. But it's remarkable that we talk about the dominance of the Prem Premier League and they then produce such a turd. And on the flip side, much maligned Serie A got, has three teams in there, all of them won. However, only one looks rather comfortable moving on, which is, of course, Napoli uh, with a 2 0 away win to Frankfurt versus the two Milan teams. Yes, they, got, they take 1 0 uh, wins, but then they have to play away from home, where I have my doubts overall. But yeah, England, nay, Serie A, yay. I also think that the German teams overall had a pretty good week, but Napoli beat Frankfurt. That a little bit clouds the overall <laughs> picture. Uh, I would say we run through it. I mean, it was all about the Tuesday game. I have to say, the, the Wednesday games, I, as I said it in the one-minute video, I really had a hard time getting into it, where I was kind of glued to the other two, although they then ended up in rather one-sided score lines, which might make the return legs not so great. Uh, let's start in Frankfurt. And before we talk about the game, I have to say the atmosphere ahead of the game with the Frankfurt fans basically um, lighting up all the pyrotechnics available in the city. Uh, that was pretty amazing atmosphere. Uh, on the downside, though, is that there were some um, trouble between the two fan groups, which I am unfortunately not very... Uh, um, it's unfortunately I have to report on that as well. Uh, the game itself, to be honest, I mean, uh, Frankfurt start, tried to start on the front foot, but it was pretty quickly clear how good Napoli are. That Napoli are just a better team, that they have a speed and a commitment that Frankfurt just could not match. Uh, it, they were outplayed almost at the same rate as they were outplayed at the start of the Bundesliga season by Bayern Munich, which is something that doesn't happen often to Frankfurt, to be honest. And uh, Napoli could have enjoyed a much larger halftime lead, uh, chiefly because Quarazcalia missed a penalty after Irving Lozano actually hit the post and the ball goes out and Ozyman wants to get it and he gets fouled. Fortunately, Quara cannot convert it, but it's only a few minutes later that uh, Osimen uh, converts uh, Lozano cross. Almost gets a little bit jumbled up with his legs uh, to make it 1-0. One, 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 then right off the kickoff, he also scored the 2-0, but it was a clear offside. Uh, but Frankfurt having serious trouble containing Napoli. And it continued also in the second half, uh, where then another key uh, moment was when Colomiani got sent off with I gotta say, yes, it was a rough tackle, but I thought that the red card was maybe a little bit uh, too harsh, given that he also in injured himself and there was clearly no intent there. I can see why the ref gave it, but I found it a little bit harsh. Uh, but with one a man less, there was really not much that uh, Frankfurt could do. And then a um, beautiful passing move. Sis Quara, Sis Di Lorenzo, 2-0 Napoli, and they see it home. Again, I want to point out how great Irving Lozano was in that one. Because it's usually the uh, Quarazgelia Osimen show. This time it was Lozano. And in that form, Napoli is a team that no one wants to play. I'm not saying they're the favorites to win it. But in this form, no one wants to play Napoli. 
Uh, it used to be that Nova wants to play Liverpool at Anfield. However, that changed dramatically uh, uh, this uh, Tuesday evening, where it got to be said, if there's one team that has higher Champions League pedigree than uh, Liverpool and, you know, Liverpool, Milan, Bayern, I find them on the same footing. But there's one team that is above them, and that's, that's these guys, Real Madrid. Um, so Real Madrid are not faced by anything. However, the start tool to the game was all Liverpool. And I gotta say, the opening goal by Darwin Nunez. What a brilliant pass Mohamed Salah found. And what a finish by Nunez. Uh, jumping with the uh, jumping uh, back heel. That was world-class stuff. Uh, world-class stuff. And Real Madrid had a little bit to uh, grapple with. Uh, uh, Liverpool is really hitting us. Uh, it's pressing us and it was very uncomfortable for Real Madrid for the longest of times. And then to top, to, to top it off, uh, back pass uh, cannot be handled by Courtois who gets jumbled up with his legs. And Salah takes care, care of it and it's 2-0 after 50, uh, 15 minutes. And at that point it all seemed to be going fairly well into Liverpool's way. Uh, it was amazing how much Liverpool seemed to be in control of that one. However, Real Madrid have one player that is at the moment at a different level, that's Vinny Jr., who uh, just a few minutes later, I mean, it was almost a nothing chance. He finds the hole and a brilliant shot takes it into the net. It's 2 1, and the Real Madrid are suddenly back in the game. Yes, there were then chances for Liverpool to um, extend the lead more. The game was then rather, rather uh, bad, bad, bad for especially in 2027. There was a big uh, double chance. Uh, where in the end then Alaba had to be uh, subbed off of with an in, in injury. But the game turned again on a goalie mistake. And before it was Courtois uh, missing, now it was Alisson, who uh, that one was almost more unforgivable because, um, well, Courtois just, just, just couldn't get his leg straight. That pass by Alisson, he has to see that Vinny is there. And Vinny doesn't even want to take the shot. He's just standing there. And yeah, hits the foot goes into the net 2-2 and that broke Liverpool because then even before the half uh, Real Madrid could have scored the uh, go-ahead head goal and then it was a disaster class by Joe Gomez uh, it's a free kick just outside of the box um, then uh, Modric I think it was committed by Joe, uh, Joe Gomez and Modric just pings it into the box and everyone forgets about Eda Militao I mean, this was really so strange. I mean, Eda Militao makes a run. No one picks up. There are four Liverpool defenders right in the uh, in uh, near the goal line, standing there, and Militao has a free shot on goal from five meters out. Then Benzema shot gets deflected by uh, Joe Gomez, and then in the 67th, a brilliant attacking move for Vini, setting up Benzema uh, and Ben Benzema, uh, you know outplays everyone and has a free shot in the net. 5-2 Real Madrid settling the time more or less. I mean, it was already at 4-2, but it was Real Madrid coming back big time. And then you heard the Olays at Anfield from the Real Madrid fans, which is something you haven't heard a whole lot in your life so far. Wednesday's games were a clear step down. I mean, Inter against Porto. Yes, the San Siro pitch is not that great. No no, 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 number one. B, both of these teams, um, yeah, this will be a tightly contested game. I have no uh, matchup, but I don't see any of these teams really uh, moving forward. Uh, let's put it that way. There were chances, uh, but it resulted a little bit more out of, uh, you know, not from great, great replay. Porto may be having a little bit more chances. However, the biggest one came by Bastoni late on. Lautaro, I think, early, early on missed a really glorious chance with a header that just has to go in. Uh, so, yeah, chances here and there, but it was not a great, great game. But I have to say, the Bastoni header, how Diego Costa is saving that one just, 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 just before the half, beggars a little bit belief. Then Porto, again, uh, slightly the better team. Uh, there were some saves that had to be made by uh, Onana. Uh, by Tipton on a yellow-red for Otavio. And then Inter really 
pulled everything forward and Lukaku with a header hits the post and on the rebound. He converts. I think if Inter would have made the second, it would have been more comfortable for them. This way, I still think Porto have a slight advantage going through. Uh, and then lastly, we have uh, Leipzig against City, where City in the first half bored me to tears. Pass, pass, pass. Uh, I really, I know, they are grinding down the opponent. And the first lapse of concentration is what they used to score the goal, where Schlager misplaces a ball, ball goes into Gundogan, who plays it onto Mares, Guardiol cannot take the ball. Maris converts. I mean, it was a very opportunistic play. But what I don't get is, with all the possession that they had, uh, it was always this tiki-taka, but uh, of the most boring, the, the, this is Spain 2012-style tiki-taka. Uh, and you basically forget about Haaland, who was just making run after run after run, but no one no, no was looking for No, let's go back. Let's take the safe pass. Yes, it grinds down the opponent, but on the other side, the opponent was a little bit too afraid of City. And Marco Rose changed that. He brings on Henriks in the second half and then a little bit later Nkunku. And suddenly Leipzig is in the game and on the front foot, trying to press Manchester City. And Manchester City suddenly have trouble. Yes, there was a chance for Haaland in there. Uh, but overall, it suddenly was Leipzig really working hard and putting City on the back foot. And they get a very well-deserved equalizer through Guardiol, who rises high. And heads it in. Uh, and then, again, maybe they could have even won that game as they did in the previous season. Uh, but also, as we said, very late on, there was, I think it was Hendricks uh, who made a clearance. It was literally the last action of, of, of the game. Playing the ball with his hand and no one is checking it. That was an in, 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 interesting one. But... I gotta say, it was not a. It was again not the greatest game, and I know that the Wednesday games. I said in one minute, video, I don't don't like any of these four teams all that much. So yeah, uh, never could get into it. I think it was a well deserved draw for Leipzig, uh, though, and maybe they can make it a game against City because City previously they put opponents away. This time around, they always have them hanging around, and I'm not sure how that pays off going forward so with those games in the book we have here now the favorites to uh, win it all Manchester City go back top but Real Madrid also I mean they are 99% chance of moving on uh, Bayern also very much in control of their title also the three top favorites at the moment um, not a very exciting mixture if you were to ask me I'm almost inclined to say yeah another Real Madrid title I will take it Napoli storm into fourth place also on their good performance. You see Inter have a 73% chance of advancing, although I don't quite see it, to be honest. Um, Liverpool, only Frankfurt and Club Rouge, who have a similar bad um, a position, are behind them. I think it's that Liverpool is still higher rated than Real Madrid at the moment. That keeps them just in there. Now, the return legs. Again, this will be at the beginning of March. Uh, we'll start with Benfica, Club Rouge and Chelsea, Dortmund. I think Chelsea, Dortmund is one uh, to watch. Then Bayern, PSG and Spurs against Milan. I think those, if there's Mbappé playing, I think this could be a very interesting set of fixtures. Then the return fixtures from uh, Wednesday evening. Yeah, I think everything is open still. So it might actually be exciting, which... Despite being more exciting teams in there on the last fixtures, I think it's all settled. Napoli and Real Madrid will move on and then we look forward to a quarterfinal draw already. So yeah, that's it from me from the Champions League. Please let me know what you thought about the games uh, over the past two weeks. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll surely talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!